Welcome to the course on gas dynamics, fundamentals and applications. Gas dynamics uh, treats uh, the compressible nature of flow in gases. Okay. So, it is uh, uh, while the fluid flow equations remain same, additional uh, complexities and considerations have to be taken uh, due to compressible nature where density uh, becomes a variable and it changes as the flow happens and this is uh, typical of gases. So, uh, many interesting features and in flow starts uh, coming up due to uh, the compressible nature of uh, gases and when they flow and especially when uh, speeds become high. So, in this course we will cover uh, various aspects of this. In this lecture we will give an introduction uh, mainly through images and videos uh, many of them captured in our uh, laboratories uh, of the flow uh, as uh, of gases at high speeds uh, where compressibility is important. So, uh, even before we go there uh, first we have to understand uh, what do we mean by compressibility, uh, compressible flow and so on. Uh, so, in uh, fluid mechanics uh, the compressibility uh, is defined as the change of volume uh, of a fluid element. Uh, in response to the pressure applied upon it. So, when you apply pressure, pressure is a compressive force uh, or compressive uh, uh, force. So, uh, based on that volume will uh, change, it will uh, try to shrink. Okay. How much does that volume uh, shrink? And that is the basic definition of uh, compressibility. Uh, so, uh, uh, mathematically it is uh, represented as beta is equal to minus 1 by V dV by dP where V is the specific volume. It can also be represented in terms of uh, density uh, because density is nothing but uh, 1 by specific volume. So, it becomes uh, 1 by rho d rho by uh, dP. Uh, uh, because pressure when you apply pressure generally the volume will uh, decrease. So, you have a negative uh, sign uh, for volume, but density will increase. Uh, so, for any particular uh, fluid uh, we can uh, define the compressibility and compressibility just tells us how uh, compressible that fluid is, how much it is uh, 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 volumes will change. Okay. Uh, not only is uh, this basic definition important, we will also see in uh, compressible flows and in gas dynamics uh, that there is a close uh, relationship between uh, these definitions and the thermodynamic process uh, that is used to achieve a certain change. Uh, so, in this case uh, compressing, compressing a certain volume can happen uh, either in an isothermal way or in a isentropic way. In isothermal way there is a certain amount of heat tra transfer involved uh, while in isentropic compression the heat transfer is not there and accordingly the um, definition of compressibility can be uh, defined as an isothermal compressibility or an isentropic compressibility. Okay. So, more of these uh, processes and how they are important in describing uh, compressible flows. Uh, we will see in actual uh, chapters that we go ahead. So, now let us just uh, compare two very common uh, fluids that we know uh, one is water and the other is air and at uh, normal standard atmospheric conditions uh, what is their uh, compressibility. If you compare them you can see that the compressibility of air uh, of water is in the range of 10 power minus 10 while for air it is in the order of 10 power minus 6. Uh, so, water is almost like uh, negligible. So, 
uh, you treat water in almost all cases as an incompressible uh, fluid or uh, constant density fluid that is what is normally uh, done and flow involving such uh, uh, liquids and waters you treat them as incompressible uh, flow. But on the other hand if you look at air it is 10 power minus 6 that is it is at least uh, 10,000 times more compressible than water. So, uh, when uh, flow of air happens then there is a possibility that during the flow uh, density can change uh, then that flow uh, becomes a flow where compressible effects become important. Normally in fluid mechanics uh, in the first uh, course on fluid mechanics one would have come across incompressible flows where density is taken as uh, constant. All of you must be aware of uh, the Bernoulli's equation where you consider uh, density as a uh, constant and you would have uh, done uh, several uh, applications of that uh, equation. But now when we come to cases when compressible effects become important uh, then uh, Bernoulli equation for a constant density flow is not uh, applicable in such uh, scenarios. Okay. So, whenever this change in density during the flow changes in density become important it is greater than 5 percent. Uh, then uh, the flow is considered as a uh, compressible flow. So, even in air which is a gas and uh, it has significant compressibility uh, if the velocities are small and uh, uh, corresponding changes to density as the flow changes if they are uh, small uh, then you can still consider the flow of air as an incompressible uh, flow. So, this uh, distinction between uh, uh, fluids which are uh, dominantly compressible uh, and have significant compressibility and uh, a compressible flow uh, when do you need to consider compressibility effects one should be uh, really aware of. Uh, air flowing at very low velocities like uh, 10 meter per second, uh, 20 meter per second is not uh, generally you need not consider the compressibility effects but air flowing at uh, something like 200 meter per second, uh, 400 meter per second uh, then compressibility effects are very important. Uh, so, there must be something really important uh, which can quantify uh, when compressibility is important, when it is not important and uh, you will find in compressible flows uh, that uh, speed of sound is a very important parameter, it is a characteristic uh, uh, velocity. Uh, you, will, you will also find that uh, uh, propagation of waves, how they affect the medium and uh, so on and the flow velocity versus speed of sound all of these concepts become important in uh, compressible flows. So, the speed of sound is just the speed at which acoustic waves move in that medium and it is a local property and it is uh, defined as uh, it has a formula for a uh, perfect gas which is square root of uh, gamma r t okay, which is given over here r is the specific gas constant and uh, t is the temperature and the static uh, temperature. Now, if you know the speed of sound then the ratio of velocity of air to speed of sound uh, in that uh, it is again a local quantity at that particular point uh, is known as the Mach number and it is the you can consider the single most important non dimensional uh, number in uh, compressible flows uh, in gas dynamics and we will be referring to Mach number almost in all the classes from now and from this moment onwards. So, uh, now we had uh, just now discussed that uh, the speed at which uh, the flow moves uh, will decide whether compressible flows are important or not important and that can be really uh, put in uh, terms of Mach number. Uh, generally it is considered that if the Mach number of the flow is greater than 0 0.3 
0 0.3 uh, then uh, compressibility effects become important. If it is less than 0 0.3 you can still consider it as an incompressible flow and uh, you can continue to do the analysis. So, for air uh, at uh, room temperature uh, at uh, uh, say uh, temperature of about 300 Kelvin the speed of sound is uh, 347 meter per second. So, uh, you can see that if you have a Mach number of 0 0.1 uh, it is about 34 meter per second uh, and a Mach number of 0 0.3 beyond which compressibility becomes important is about 104 uh, meter per second. So, beyond 100 meter per second uh, can be considered as a compressible flow uh, with an ambient temperature of 300 Kelvin. So, uh, you should really look at Mach number, uh, see if the Mach number is uh, greater than 0 0.3, then compressibility is important. Uh, if it is less than 0 0.3, then it is not uh, so important. So, now that uh, we have an idea of what do we mean by uh, compressible flows and uh, compressibility. Now, how important are these flows? So, if you look at that, uh, they are uh, widespread actually, they you uh, find them everywhere and they have been there all the time, uh, right from uh, natural flows to all the way to current uh, engineering applications and future research and many interesting aspects of these uh, flows. Uh, in general flow in gases is uh, compressible and there are several interesting uh, phenomena that occur uh, as the speed of uh, uh, the flow increases uh, with respect to the speed of sound. An important phenomena that occurs at uh, velocities greater than the speed of sound known as uh, supersonic flows is the phenomenon of uh, shock waves. Now, these are special uh, flow features which are very thin, extremely thin, they are so thin that you can consider them almost as uh, discontinuities and across which there is a sudden jump in pressure, temperature and density and there is a reduction in uh, velocity they are the means by which uh, supersonic flows respond to certain uh, flow conditions or if there is a flow turn and uh, so on. And we will go through in fact, uh, majority of uh, uh, discussions in uh, gas dynamics will involve uh, shock waves and their uh, interactions and how they behave in certain flow scenarios and so on. And uh, these waves are found uh, everywhere and in any uh, sort of compressible flow where uh, you expect uh, uh, the velocities to go beyond the speed of sound. In nature they are very much present in uh, cases like uh, the explosive uh, volcano that is uh, described over here or uh, even in, uh, in the universe. Uh, these shock waves are quite common uh, and you find them in because majority of the uh, gases that are there they behave in compressible manner and uh, you can move with extremely high velocities. So, you can find shock waves there. So, in nature it is quite uh, common, uh, but uh, really in engineering and in applications where uh, we started to find use of or rather these phenomena occurring frequently uh, are uh, initially they would have been seen uh, when uh, explosions happen, when there is a sudden deposition of uh, large amounts of energy. Uh, then uh, such uh, waves are formed and they are known as blast waves, uh, which is a uh, one form of the uh, shock wave essentially they are a shock wave and they move uh, supersonic speeds. For example, it is shown in this particular picture, um, a, an explosion happens and you can see uh, just at the outer periphery here a wave that moves and this moves at very high speed and it is a very sharp wave front and uh, there is a large pressure jump that appears across it 
and it can cause significant it is the first wave that causes quite a good amount of uh, damage. Uh, so, uh, probably uh, compressible flows other places naturally which would have occurred is thunderclaps and uh, so on. Uh, but really uh, more detailed studies in two compressible flows uh, began with uh, early on with uh, trying to extract energy uh, like steam power and uh, steam turbines, uh, steam engines and so on. There um, you really observed the compressible uh, nature of uh, uh, flow and at those points of time in history a lot of things about uh, thermodynamics and uh, fluid flows were also not uh, so well developed and they were developing at that point aspects uh, like supersonic flow in uh, nozzles and so on uh, were developed at during those times. The D Laval nozzle was an important uh, invention uh, in the context of uh, steam turbines. And uh, this compressible gas flow uh, and at high uh, velocities uh, is still a matter of importance for energy applications in gas turbine, gas compressors, so on. And today we are looking at uh, doing uh, higher and higher amounts of uh, energy conversion uh, with uh, compact machines with greater efficiency, higher temperatures. Uh, then compressibility effects become even more uh, predominant. Uh, really uh, the way this field really took off uh, is when uh, the flight and space age uh, began because uh, at uh, in those uh, uh, times uh, when one has to go beyond uh, the atmosphere of uh, earth uh, then you really have to provide significant uh, velocities and uh, then uh, we really see the effects of uh, compressible flow. And here there are two pictures of uh, aircrafts one uh, at this bottom left corner uh, which is a very nice uh, uh, picture where you have a um, flight which is going at uh, what is known as uh, transonic Mach numbers which is Mach numbers close to uh, speed of sound and there is a pocket of uh, supersonic flow that develops and uh, it gets terminated by a shock forming a kind of a condensation cloud and this is nicely visualized in this uh, uh, particular photographs. Uh, in this kind of uh, flight is very common any uh, transport aircraft a civilian aircraft uh, passenger aircraft uh, flies at Mach numbers of uh, between 0 0.7 0 0.8 and uh, uh, that is clearly in the domain of uh, compressible flows. Uh, here on the in the middle and on the top part is another interesting photograph that uh, shows uh, the features of shock waves around uh, aircrafts which are flying at uh, supersonic speeds. Uh, you would have heard that when objects move at supersonic uh, speeds you first see them and hear them much later and there are reasons why that happens and we will soon uh, uh, learn about them in this course. Uh, why such uh, phenomena happens you would have heard about sonic booms and uh, so on um, which are parts of this uh, course. And when one considers a rocket moving uh, very quickly to the upper parts of the atmosphere here there is a snapshot uh, from uh, one of ISRO's own uh, rocket and here you can see it is ejecting out extremely high velocity high temperature gases. Uh, they are in uh, supersonic speeds which is uh, visualized by these uh, shock waves which can be seen at specific locations. Why they occur and uh, how are they important is something that we uh, deal with in this uh, course. So, uh, there are numerous applications of uh, um, compressible flows. And in modern times they have uh, these uh, uh, special 
waves these shock waves have been turned into useful applications like biomedical applications for removing kidney stones using lithotripsers and so on so not only is there uh, and they are present naturally uh, there are several uh, engineering applications there are also applications in medicine biology and so on so really it has a wide range of applications so uh, uh, what we will do today that provides us the motivation to learn uh, ga gas dynamics, compressible flows, go into the details. But today we will just look at images and understand uh, what are the important physical features uh, that are there in such flows, uh, what is important, what do we learn here and so on, uh, providing you further uh, motivation to learn this uh, particularly interesting uh, subject. And uh, before I go into those images, they are taken using a special method known as the Schlieren visualization. And I just explain what is a Schlieren uh, visualization. Um, the uh, Schlieren is a technique that captures uh, variations of uh, density in a uh, medium. So, variations of density uh, vary the refractive index and as a consequence a beam of light going through a uh, region where there are uh, large density changes uh, bends uh, significantly. Okay. So, um, uh, what we see here is a setup uh, that is typically used in uh, uh, experimental labs where there is a light source and uh, uh, the beam, the uh, the light from the light source is made into a parallel beam using concave mirrors, uh, or lenses can also be used, and this beam is passed into a region of uh, interrogation, where there is a flow happening, where density gradients or density changes are present. Then the light is collected and focused back onto a sharp uh, knife edge, which acts like a uh, sort of a filter. Um, uh, filtering out certain uh, deflected rays uh, which move towards the knife edge. So, that we can visualize uh, what have moved uh, away from the knife edge and what has moved into the knife edge and uh, then it is captured using a uh, camera. Since compressible flows involve large changes in density, uh, these large changes in density can be readily captured using Schlieren. In fact, Schlieren is uh, uh, so widely used to uh, study compressible flow. So, we will be watching several uh, Schlieren images as well as uh, videos in uh, some cases, which were taken in uh, the laboratory of hypersonic and shockwave research uh, in Indian Institute of Science. And I have to really um, uh, acknowledge all my colleagues uh, who have worked with us in the lab as well as many students who have been a part of this work, uh, these different works uh, uh, which have enabled us to show such excellent uh, uh, images over here. Hmm. And here in this case you see uh, a nozzle flow and if you look at its uh, structure this is not uh, very different from the one you saw at the edge of the rocket uh, because this is a supersonic flow. So, you can see uh, the flow is happening from uh, left to right and uh, this nozzle produces a uh, supersonic flow of uh, Mach number about uh, 2 and uh, here uh, the pressure at which uh, uh, the nozzle is being supplied uh, is changed. Uh, this is in some sense uh, similar to what happens to the rocket as it ascends up uh, to into the upper uh, layers of the atmosphere. There the ambient pressure uh, reduces uh, as you go higher and higher. Uh, so, the way the jet behaves as it comes out changes uh, as uh, the pressure ratio between the ambient and the supply pressure keep changing. So, here is some uh, images that shows what happens. In this case, we are increasing supply pressure and uh, so, initially the supply pressure is uh, 
quite smaller and you have significant uh, x kind of marks which are dark you can observe it here these are nothing but uh, shock waves which are present in uh, supersonic flow uh, here the shock waves come about uh, as the jet responds uh, to the ambient pressure now as uh, the pressure keeps increasing uh, there is possibility that uh, the jet can further expand in the atmosphere. So, you see that towards the end uh, which is at a much higher pressure uh, there is a slight expansion of the jet. So, um, we will study these various uh, operating regimes of flows through nozzles from nozzles and so on in this uh, particular course. So, uh, variable area ducts how does flow happen in variable area ducts, what happens to flow once it comes out of the nozzle, uh, what if it is subsonic, what, what is it, if it is supersonic so on and so forth. Uh, this uh, is a particular uh, uh, video of uh, when there is a sudden deposition of energy then uh, you get uh, shock waves uh, to, uh, to call it by the exact name it is a kind of a blast wave. This is uh, produced by compressed gases suddenly being uh, pushed out in a laboratory experiment um, and uh, these waves travel uh, very quickly uh, faster than the speed of uh, sound um, and uh, you can see the sharp front, the sharp front uh, is due to the uh, shock wave. So, we will study about uh, shock waves and uh, if you take any particular a ray then almost the shock wave is normal to that particular ray. So, we will study about various uh, types of uh, shock waves normal shocks, oblique shocks and uh, so on and what is the pressure ratio, what is uh, how does Mach number change or velocity change across the shock and uh, so on. This is an important uh, uh, sort of example of what is known as moving uh, shock where the shock moves uh, inside the duct if the shock wave is present it is uh, uh, you can consider it as a stationary shock also. So, these are some aspects which we will go in detail in this course. Okay. So, just to give a perspective uh, here is uh, our comparative uh, experiments between uh, on the left hand side is a very uh, loud uh, sound which can uh, startle you it is nothing but a, a scale uh, suddenly falling. So, you can uh, see this scale falling and it creates a uh, wave and the wave can be visualized. This is a strong uh, wave uh, acoustic wave. Uh, loud sound it can uh, startle you, uh, but it is it just travels at the speed of sound itself it is not uh, really a uh, shock wave. But on the other hand here on the right side you have uh, another uh, um, device which is also uh, quite common it is a, a, a Diwali Pataka uh, it is just a uh, 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 firecracker used in uh, the festivals and you see that uh, when this uh, firecracker is uh, lit and when it is fired you really get a very uh, significantly sharp front which is typical to uh, shock waves. Of course, this shock is much milder uh, as compared to uh, uh, what would be produced in the previous uh, slide what we sh saw, uh, but even then uh, this is not uh, in any way uh, as small as a scale falling which is even a scale falling itself is a uh, quite a loud sound uh, a metal scale falling, but uh, what you see here is a uh, uh, Diwali Pataka and that produces really a very strong uh, pressure wave which is more closer to a uh, shock wave. So, now uh, we will see more of uh, uh, typical 
uh, bodies uh, which are similar to uh, objects that move through air uh, at very high speeds. This is a very blunt kind of a shape, a semi uh, a hemispherical shape and a uh, supersonic flow um, is uh, flowing um, over it from left to right. And uh, this uh, supersonic flow when it flows past uh, such uh, bodies uh, abruptly it has to uh, change its uh, speed because on the body the flow has to come relatively at rest to the body. Uh, and uh, this sudden change in velocity is accomplished using a shock wave uh, which is uh, well visible over here uh, that this kind of a shock has a bow uh, like structure it is called uh, a bow shock. And in this particular video on the uh, right what you see is an uh, interaction when you have multiple bodies uh, like what you uh, saw which is uh, typical to a spacecraft or a rocket you have many components. Uh, then uh, shock waves from different components can uh, interact with each other. So, this uh, video uh, shows uh, such an interaction. And uh, further if you look at um, even uh, high speed flows. So, uh, you find that the, temp the velocity increases so high that if you produce any change to velocity it uh, uh, also brings about a huge change in other thermodynamic variables of course, density changes here even temperature changes significantly and it can change to such an extent uh, that uh, you can have very very high temperature gas and uh, the temperatures will be so high that it will start radiating and you can get a glow and this is what is seen over here. This is typical to uh, re-entry kind of flow scenarios when uh, some object like a space capsule re-enters the earth's atmosphere then uh, its energies are so high. Uh, that it can glow and temperatures can become very high. Uh, then uh, the important question is how do we save uh, the uh, vehicle from such high temperatures, uh, how do we protect it, thermal protection systems and so on. So, in compressible flows on one hand you have uh, uh, supersonic flows, subsonic flows, supersonic flows and this comes very high. Uh, enthalpy flows uh, which are also called as hypersonic flows where certain important aspects like high temperature effects become important. On the right hand side is another visualization where you can see uh, further see the uh, radiating gas ahead of bodies in uh, very high speed flows. Uh, here the speeds are close to uh, 1 or 2 kilometers per second it is not in meters per second uh, anymore. So, uh, I hope these uh, uh, images and videos would have uh, given a, a idea about uh, many many interesting uh, features that appear in uh, compressible flows. Uh, therefore, uh, we have in this course uh, many aspects of what we just uh, saw and in the course of this course uh, we uh, look at uh, all these uh, different uh, phenomena. Since the uh, density is a variable there is additional equations that need to be applied just, uh, uh, besides the uh, fluid flow equations and uh, there is a close interaction between energy of the flow and uh, changes in velocity and so on. Uh, therefore, thermodynamics becomes an important part. Uh, so, you have to use both thermodynamics and fluid dynamics. So, we will begin our uh, discussions with uh, uh, a review of thermodynamics. So, this being a course in compressible flow it is expected that you know fluid dynamics and uh, thermodynamics well you would have undergone a first course in fluid dynamics and thermodynamics. So, these uh, flow equations and uh, 
thermodynamic equations we will just review we will not go into too much detail we will take what is necessary for uh, discussions in our class of uh, gas dynamics uh, but uh, please do uh, go through them and revise them then you will understand this course even uh, better and uh, uh, typically these uh, flows uh, the first way to or uh, uh, understand the flows and uh, analyze them is using what is known as a control volume approach and uh, look at uh, uh, very uh, simple cases like isentropic flows and specific uh, flow features like normal shock waves, oblique shock waves and uh, some of their applications in uh, certain devices known as shock tubes and uh, uh, we will go into details of um, uh, how flow happens through varying area ducts and uh, look into certain applications like nozzles, diffusers, how they are applied in high speed wind tunnels or uh, air intakes and look at also into flows where there is a long duct and there is friction inside uh, the duct as the fluid flow goes along which is nothing but uh, similar to pipe flow which is known as fano flow and uh, also cases where uh, you can have heat addition happening or heat removal happening, heat transfer happening in a constant area duct so that is known as a rally flow. In all these cases uh, density is a variable and you need not only uh, mass and momentum conservation, but also energy conservation. And finally, we will come to uh, looking at flow fields in uh, general, particularly two dimensional flow fields. We look at some special methods which can be used to design supersonic nozzles and a brief introduction in special topics to uh, uh, aspects like small perturbation theory hypersonic flows which are uh, flows at which very high enthalpies and high velocities are present and uh, shock boundary layer interactions. So, uh, uh, with this we have a uh, sort of a complete uh, uh, good uh, uh, presentation about what is uh, basic understanding of um, compressible flows. Uh, which can be used in practice or, uh, and uh, help you understand uh, different engineering applications uh, in the domain. So, in the next class we will uh, look at uh, what is uh, meant by different flow regimes in uh, compressible flow, what do we mean by subsonic flow, what do we mean by supersonic flow uh, and uh, so on. So, uh, we will meet in the next class, uh, thank you.